Hi friends, hope you are doing well. Today I'm going to talk about the fact that so many Indians have become CEOs of global multinational companies. So for example, if you look at Microsoft, if you look at Google, if you look at YouTube, if you look at IBM, you will often see that Indians are at the helm as the CEO of these companies. So I'm going to trace the journey of these people from their bachelor's degree onward and let's see what we can learn from their particular experience. So let's begin. Now the number one thing you will see here is that almost all these people have done their engineering bachelor's degree, typically a bachelor's of technology or a BTEC degree from some of the top Indian institutions. So these could be the IITs, the Indian Institute of Technologies, the institutions like the Birla Institute of Technology, institution like Manipal Institute of Technology and so on. So you will note that in fact, some of these institutions have extremely difficult competitive exams. Some of them require a high percentage of marks in terms of their board exams and so on. That is the class 12 exam. So what happens here is that these guys essentially went through a very competitive admission process. They had rigorous and tough coursework. This gave them confidence to do their master's degree in the US and the confidence to work in top companies. Furthermore, they also have very high IQ in most cases. And one of the things that helped as far as the Indian education system is concerned is that in India, there is a lot of focus on rote learning. So do remember that when we were studying trigonometry, we were expected to memorize all the different formulas as far as trigonometry is concerned. We were expected to remember all the different derivatives, the integrals and so on. So this is a kind of course curriculum which is very rigorous, which requires that you memorize a large number of formulas, for example, in mathematics, for example, in physics, for example, in chemistry and so on. So that does help to send some of this information into the deep recesses of your brain, which can help you later on, particularly when you start thinking about doing a master's degree. So now one of the things which helped these people is that when they came to US, they often did a master's degree in a technical discipline. So this MS degree, which they did, this further cemented their knowledge of the particular field they were in. And also it helped them increase their critical thinking. So the change which happens when you come from India to the US is that the focus is now less on rote learning, more on critical thinking. So you have to do a lot of analysis. You have to write term papers. You have to do projects and so on. So this is kind of like a perfect combination where you combine the rote learning with the critical thinking. So the rote learning part develops your left brain. And then since all this information has been packed into your brain, you are ready to do the critical thinking when you move to the US system. Now let's look at the next issue, which has to do with the MBA degree, which they often did after the MS degree. So this certainly is a very high level of education. And normally people would not do this kind of degree because most people who have done a master's degree in a tech discipline, they remain tech people all their life. But many of these guys, they actually had to do the master's degree because they wanted to come to the US. And very often, if you want to get financial aid and scholarship to come to the US, you need to study the science and technology domain. You cannot get funding for MBA. So these guys often came to the US through the master of science route. They finished the master of science and they got a job. Some people even finished a PhD and got a job. Now, what the MBA degree does is that it combines technical depth with big picture mindset. So they already had a good idea as far as critical thinking is concerned. The quantitative skills were very good because engineers tend to have very good quantitative skills. And now they learned about the big picture. They learned about management. They learned about business processes, about organization theory, about human resources and especially they learn about finance and how to develop business plans. So one of the important things in companies is that people should not only solve the technical problem, but they should know why they actually should do a particular problem. So this is sometimes known as strategic thinking. So this kind of thing is typically taught in the MBAs. So this particular combination of doing a BTEC degree, then doing a master of science degree, then doing an MBA is a particularly unique combination which many Indian CEOs have. Now, the next thing has to do with global mindset and global mindset develops because you all know that India is a very multicultural country. So there are many languages, religions, castes, creed and so on. So if you want to survive as far as India is concerned, you have to be a very multicultural person. And so when you move to the US, you are always somebody who has very good multicultural skills. You know how to handle diversity, diverse issues. 
people tend to be typically affable and amiable at least at the start of the process because that's something which you need to do as far as india is concerned if you want to survive in that particular country so this certainly helped the indian ceos work well within their companies for a long period of time which brings me to the next issue which is that of loyalty and you will see that many of these indian ceos they actually worked in their companies for a prolonged period of time something like 10 20 or even 30 years before they become ceos so this is somewhat uncommon as far as most people talk about career growth is concerned so these guys essentially remained stuck to the same place they weathered the different conditions the profits and losses the high and low phases for example companies like ibm went through various phases and the ceo stuck out through these phases so what happened with that is that many of the top people in the companies had a lot of faith in these particular people if you work in a company for 10 10 or 20 or 30 years in tech you essentially end up knowing the company in and out so this kind of controlled ambition which they had helped the situation when the ceo selection had to happen and then they became ceos now i don't know if this particular theory can continue down the road at least it has continued till now so this has helped these people very much now the next thing has to do with the english language and again how did the indians acquire so many english skills one of the reasons of course is that many of these guys had to study very hard for the gre exam and i remember that during our btech days there were students who essentially studied the baron's kite for gre completely and they would memorize the complete vocabulary list so today what you see the obsession with spelling bees as far as the indians in us are concerned this has been going on for quite a long time and many people used to read the dictionary cover to cover so these were some of the people who knew the english language very well and this penchant for rote learning helped them down the road because what happens is that all these words all this vocabulary is drilled inside their head and somewhere all this information keeps roaming around the neural networks and makes you a more creative and a more competent person now the next thing has to do with family and as far as most in indian americans are concerned they had the advantage of having straightforward family life so they essentially had stable marriages they have a proper home and so on where they can come to and they do not receive too many stresses from the family side of the equations now as far as us people are concerned they often have a lot of problems in their family so they may be having a lot of disturbances as far as their personal life is concerned which can often make life very difficult for them in terms of balancing the demands of a very competitive work environment and a very competitive home environment also so that is something which at least the current generation of indians were spared off now the final thing has to do with the immigration and of course you know that as far as immigration is concerned it is a self-selective process that means certain people decide that they are going to leave their country and move to a far away distant country and that itself shows that these guys essentially have a lot of desire a lot of ambition and that's something which helps all immigrant communities but of course you can say that that kind of desire would help chinese communities it would help the other communities also but those communities may often lack some of these things which the indians had for example the command on the language itself the english language the capability of talking a lot because do remember in us it's a very verbal culture so you have to get your way across by talking in meetings and so on and it's not a confucius culture where the things are essentially driven top down so many of those things help the indian people concerned so i think it was a blend of the western values and the asian values which help many of these indians become ceos as far as the us companies are concerned so hopefully you can learn many things from this video for example rote learning is not all bad for example doing a master of science degree after a bachelor's degree is a good concept and an MBA degree is always something which is useful to pick up if you are planning to become a CEO or advance beyond the levels of senior engineer, technical fellow and so on in any given companies.